So guys, welcome. Welcome to the CES, the second edition of the show. And it's not every day that we have two heavyweights from the world of tech. Gary Shapiro, President CEO from CES, and Kaushal Navrikar, CEO, CMO of Alliance Digital. We all know what this means when these two people met. And I'm going to be talking to these guys and taking you through all that has to happen. So Gary, so every time it really amazes me to see how much we've progressed. So what are your thoughts? Like how has CES been from 2017 to 2018? Well, the vision of CES is to get together the most important people in the world sure. who are focused on innovation. Um, people like you. Because <laughs> you, from around the world, everyone converges and they get to see the future. And they get to think of things they would never otherwise think of and meet people they wouldn't otherwise meet. This is a lot sure. of serendipity. But we also know where things are going. We know that self-driving cars are coming. We know that robotics are coming. We know that drones are going to make a difference. We know that 3D printing is already making a difference. We know that um, there's major developments in healthcare sure. and in transportation and so many other areas. So here is everyone gets together one week of the year yeah. and business flows from it, ideas flow from it, and partnerships flow. Because one thing we all know now yeah. is that in this world, you can't do business without doing partnerships. No one could go alone. And every company is affected by technology. Sure. I believe it completely. So, Kaushal, for you also, I've been seeing you at CS for the, for the time since the time I'm coming here. It's been, it's my ninth year, by the way, Thank CS. You. So, uh, tell us the connect, like. Yeah, I think just Gary, I didn't do Gary. Gary spoke about it really well. This is, this is where the entire technology world gets together for about mm. a week and, and you get a peek into really uh, what's coming next and you get to meet all the like-minded people. So if, if, even if I look at, from a retailer's perspective, all the partners that I had to meet, yeah. uh, if I had to travel, that would take an insane amount of time. So right now, all of them getting together mm -hmm. and sharing really great thoughts about technology. I mean, and I've, I've, seen, I've seen CES for many, many years and every year it just gets better and better. Yep. I think the, the bar is raised every year. Great, great work for the entire organization. Thank you. Gary, you know, technology is becoming more personalized every day, every walk of the life. This year, what do you think? Like, you think these gadgets and everything are getting more personalized with the AI and everything? Well, certainly artificial intelligence is a, is a primitive stage, but we know it's going to get better. Right. And last year we talked about smart speakers with Alexa. But now it's smart, that smartness will be embedded in other products, will be embedded sure. in automobiles, will be embedded around the home, will be smart homes. So you won't have to, um, and then it'll, it'll start learning about you, mm -hmm. and it'll personalize, and it'll learn what you've done before. I love my nav device on my car, but it never learns. Yeah. You know, it always, I always go certain ways, and it's never quite figured it out, and it tells me to go other ways. I want sure. one that knows me and it knows what I like, it knows the things I like to do, and then that, that will benefit me. But it goes into other areas as well. I mean, these, this massive amounts of intelligence that are being gathered are gonna be useful for so many new services. So many new services. Be useful for curing diseases and medicine, because we don't really know what works and what doesn't. Exactly. I mean, it's very, we live in a more random world than we sometimes admit we're in. Yes. And as we get, and then there's jobs that no one can do. They, they can't monitor things 24 hours a day perfectly, but intelligence, artificial intelligence combined with all the, you know, the cheapening of the cameras and you put all that together and you have a safer, more secure world. Exactly. Secure world. Like, you know, it's my first day, in fact, everybody's first day. Bixby at Samsung is doing something similar. So it's really uh, the, the AI chatbot that they have is coming right together. So Kaushal, what do you think in terms of personality technology? Because that's what Reliance also stands for. So it's, it's very, very close to our heart, Ramesh. Uh, as a retailer, our, our, really, our objective is to simplify technology. See, what we've seen, customers now are, are far more um, involved uh, in the technology pur uh, purchase. They are, they are far more uh, involved. And because each individual has both the need of the device and the ultimate use is very, very different. Sure. In fact, I believe individualization is the new specification right now. True. Uh, so our objective is really to to handhold the consumers right from uh, deciding what products to buy um, and help them fulfill their technology dreams by really enabling the end use, which is so individual. Sure. So it's very very close to our heart. So any personal favorites from this year that we can save time on? <laughs> Gary can suggest us the man himself. It's like asking which of my favorite 
kids. <laughs> There's so many different things which are exciting, and it, it's a lot about the future and and taking major problems we have around the world and solving them. Sure. Whether it's food production or clean water or mobility or communication or sharing of knowledge and using data available to figure things out. So you put all that together, that's what excites me. Is, and it's also exciting because we have uh, over a thousand companies in Eureka Park. Yeah. These are startups. These are yeah. people from all over the world that have an idea and they get to meet important journalists, important buyers, and, and, and you decide whether those are good ideas. Yeah, not only that, they come here and they, I always tell them, you've probably never even been to a trade show before. What you should do is listen. Listen to the input you're getting from these important people because they'll tell you and you'll leave with a different business plan, but you could still have a great business if you listen. Yeah. In fact, uh, I've told everybody that I've been coming here ever since and I'm yet to come across a man who has walked the show completely. <laughs> You it's impossible. There's four, over 4,000 4, exhibitors, exhibitors and even with the conferences, etc. It's et larger than it was last year by another 100,000 square feet. We have uh, over 1,000 people speaking. There's yeah. One human can't do it. Exactly. You, you couldn't do it in a year. I you couldn't do it in a year, seriously. And you have to take a pick from the two best keynotes happening together. <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> it, it, well, it's, it is a little frustrating, I have to yeah. admit. But, but on the other hand, increasingly companies are using Teams. Right. And they break it up. And also, we try to make our app better and better so you can plan ahead of time and you can yeah. what you want. And we also encourage people to be smart in their planning. Absolutely. To stay in you know, a facility yeah. for a day or so, then move to the next one and set your appointments up. Um, Without that, it's impossible. So, Kaushal, uh, what are your thoughts on the current scene in tech right now? I know Exhibit and Reliance has been working the show together for the last couple of years. So, what are you going to take away? Tell us something about it. I think things are evolving way too fast. Um, I think voice is the future. The way we've seen things uh, move uh, with, with voice recognition, artificial intelligence, machine learning. I think devices are getting more and more connected and personalized and we are extremely excited about all of that. See, as a country, uh, we are at a significant uh, uh, I mean, we are at a unique position right now. So mm -hmm. with, with Geo, we added about 140 million um, subscribers, subscribers uh, over the last many months. From and a lot of you guys are watching this show on Geo, Geo right now. <laughs> so from being 155th, 150 million people, <laughs> 155th in mobile broadband um, uh, usage worldwide, to be in a matter of less than a year to be the number one. I think as a country, this whole digital India initiative. Uh, we are seeing a significant paradigm shift. Now with all these products coming uh, together and data available in abundance, uh, I'm very, very excited. So the whole objective of this trip is to really see what's, what's coming and being the largest retailer, it's our responsibility to bring the latest and the greatest to all the consumers. Yeah. Uh, at the earliest. Do you crack like big deals here? Purchasing uh, checks? It's, it's, it's being flown in? <laughs> not necessarily. <laughs> it's more about meeting like-minded people and really trying to shape up A is technology being evolved and secondly how do you bring it to the consumers. I think these sure. are the two primary objectives. And I'm really excited this time. Um, you know, I always thought that whatever I could come and learn at CES, how do I take it to a larger audience? You know, we used to have a debriefing session with our teams. Yeah. I've increased my number of people from my office coming here to what, six or eight. It's still not good enough. So with Geo and this event being now broadcasted to over 140 million people, I'm happy that I've been able to enable Indians to really look at what is happening. Now this will also give us, give Gary the hint that it's time that CES comes to India and we do a show together in a big, bigger canvas. What do you have to say? Let's, let's tell us. <laughs> well, you know what's really great right now is that we're an incredible time in world history. Right. Where it's a confluence I haven't seen, at least in my life, and where almost every economy is doing well. Yeah. Well, the, the world, exactly. there's some hot spots, definitely, but we're generally at peace. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of optimism around the world. At the same time, there's this tremendous, almost hockey stick curve in, in technology in so many different categories True. that are changing people's lives. So it's a, it's a, and that also generates more economic activity, it generates jobs and income, and then people want more and they see more and they create, and, and, and also, we're at a time where anyone can become a global entrepreneur with, with a, just a broadband connection. 
so what a phenomenal time period. And that's why we see so much activity in Eureka Park and we see it around the show. And, and, is, and India is, is clearly uh, doing phenomenally well. Every, yeah. it, it's a large population with, with the strong economy and growth. And the only thing I would push back on is you need self-driving cars. I heard you're <laughs> you, you cannot stop innovation and progress. And we, we're ranking sure. every country now as whether they're innovation friendly and whether they welcome new business models or not. And India is, is pretty good, except that transportation ministry saying we'll never allow because it, it's it's from from their point of view it's a big boat bang it's, you know but the truth is is that it's, it will save thousands if not millions of lives and will create new jobs it'll create jobs for operators and cleaners and servicers and it'll also save uh, it'll allow transportation to be so much more efficient it'll be greener and better for the environment and clean I mean there's so many yeah. reasons to do it but yes job we have the same concern in our country jobs jobs for drivers the driving is a big job big job and it's, but on the other hand, we, we created 12 million jobs around the world for application developers. We've created jobs for security people. We're creating jobs. So, you know, when those self-driving cars uh, come up, who's going to go to the car and get out whatever's being delivered? True. There's, there'll be jobs for people like that. Those, those self-driving cars will have to be clean. I mean, there's so many jobs which will be created. <laughs> so uh, uh, any, any, any brands, like last year when I was here, I saw two unusual brands. Why unusual? Because... I would not expect them in a tech show. Under Armour and Oceanic, uh, the cruise Carnival. company, Carnival. So it was very mesmerizing, but when I went for the keynote and when I understood there's so, so much of tech behind every company in the world. So what are the unusual companies that this year you think that we should not be surprised of? Well, it's interesting to see some of the Chinese companies coming in so strong, like uh, Baidu yeah. and Alibaba, are, they're expanding what they're doing. Um, it, when you have 4,000 companies, it's, it's tough to single them out. Sure. Uh, but certainly there's companies in the sports area, the health area. We're getting into stadiums now in terms of um, sports. Right. There's esports is big. big. Esports, of course, Huge. Is, is big and, and growing. Um, so we're in many new areas. Uh, but there's a lot. But I would also pay attention to the companies with no names. Yeah. Because every one of these big name companies we have today started as a no name no company. Every one. True. If you have to put your money on some companies and some projects, what will that be? I put it on Tell innovation. us. <laughs> I put it on someone like you and you. <laughs> he loves what they're doing and is, is willing to understand that no matter what, it takes hard work. It takes, it takes the willingness to take risks. You make mistakes, but you minimize the cost of those mistakes. You move forward quickly. You know, I'll send you my white paper. <laughs> This year, I also saw one very unusual thing. Not unusual, I, I saw too many conferences happening together, which is not part of CS. For example, yesterday I was invited to a coins conference, which was a bit Bitcoin conference. It was massive. Then just yesterday, again, there was something happening with startup, done by anybody else. Do you think like CS is becoming the hotbed where even other other show flows are coming and using this to encash on there? And does it help or does it come in your way? Like. Um. I love the fact that we've become the center for innovation and certainly we can't control and do everything. We control the environments we're in and we do have partnership relationships. To the extent they use our name, I, I got a very uh, serious complaint from someone who attended a conference they thought was ours. Someone was using our name yeah. in, in Las Vegas. Yeah, it's were, a big thing. And they're very upset because we maintain a certain quality in everything we do and we're very careful as to how we use our name. So if someone wants to have a conference in Las Vegas, they're welcome to. Just don't use our name. Yeah, sure. And I, you know, I, it's the and don't confuse people. It's it's you don't want your your brand associated with something that's low quality. Yeah, sure. The past year has been really booming with VR and AR. I guess we just we just discussed. Uh, do you think that this VR is going to really change a lot of things in the world? What are the industries that will affect? Or should even you can put some thoughts in this. This is for both of you. You know, because the VR and AR is the name. Like Intel has put of, course, of course, the question is when. When. So in being, being right in business, it's not just a matter of being right; it's being better right at the being right, right time. Being right at the right time. Uh, so, but, but certainly, uh, VR is. You, you know, if you look twenty years from now, you look back and say, "Oh wow, VR is of course it's yeah. changed the the environment for entertainment. It's changed it for education. It's changed it for so many things." And AR similarly. I mean, AR just there's a lot of focus here on the retail experience using AR, uh, smart retailing is something that, that, that will start happening more and more around the world. It's like how you as a brick and mortar retailer even 
can get consumers into your store and feel comfortable and, and they learn what's there and, and you learn how to serve them better. Um, and, and also a feedback loop for what's, even like how long someone's standing in front of a, the, how they make a decision. All, all the amount of, of analytics you'll have in a few years is going to sure. be incredible. Also, so we, do we see robots in Reliance Digital stores? Do we see some AI bots coming so, soon? Uh, when, when you ask about Reliance Digital, everything that's got a consumer demand, you'll, you'll find them in our stores. And that's yeah. what, some of them may not necessarily be high sellers, but, but the whole idea is to walk in the right direction of evolution. I think that's where we definitely see. And specifically to AR and VR, I completely agree with, with Gary. Of course it's coming. The question is when. So mm -hmm. The amount of people who are now um, involved in developing and organizing content uh, sure. is, is, is far higher than we had some time back. I think that whole immersive experience is going to play on. Sure. When I landed in Las Vegas, there was this bot which was telling us to walk in here, walk in there. Did you experience that? And yeah, it was Airlines Terminal Four. Yeah, and it was looking at me where whichever way was going. Though I'm a techie, I was like mesmerized. Then I finally was, you know, like was there for half an hour. It was so much mesmerizing. So that's all. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for all your time, Gary. It's lovely to have you all with us. Thank you so much. It's terrific.